<laughs> okay. If you're outside wanting to come inside, do that now. Excellent. So up next is uh, Brad Whittington. I've had the pleasure of working with him and the displeasure of being his friend. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, PHP and how terrible an addiction it is. Um, and um, he is r actually probably quite a good PHP developer and hopefully a better Python developer. Brad, over to you. Um, is this on? Cool. Um, I think this, this talks more about... Uh, be a bit sensitive when dealing with somebody who's who's uh, come from a PHP background. I'm sure. I mean, uh, as a show of hands, how many people have used PHP in their careers here? So a shitload. Um, I mean, y you know, everybody's uh, come from that background, and you you've now found the the Kool Aid, and you're loving Python, and and you you just want to tell everybody about it. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a talk to say how can we how can we be a bit sensitive to people coming across and kind of empower them to, to, to use it. So, oh, didn't come out. Um, so who am I? Um, at Dob and Brad Whittington on GitHub. Um, and my day job is the DevOps manager <coughs> at MoTribe, which has recently been acquired by Mixit. Um, and my other job is that technical co-founder of a company called Lesfas. Um, in my day job, I deal with a team that, that works on PHP. I don't write, write much PHP myself, but it's kind of, I'm very much in the situation now that I'm saying to guys, hey, you know, um, I'm that guy. This would be easier in Python. Um, and people get a bit sick of hearing it um, because, you know, it's like, how many times can you hear that before you say, okay, well, I want to learn, but it's actually quite intimidating. And you know PHP is fine for us. We've we've been using it for a while, and I, you know I don't I don't see anything wrong with what we're doing here. Um, but you know what? That just happened, and I don't know if anyone's okay with that, but I'm not. Um, at the same time, there's within PHP you you kind of get used to this stuff, and you actually you start leveraging it, um, and it it starts to be kind of why there is success, such a success of PHP. It's very loosey-goosey on the typing. It's very kind of, oh, there's a zero in there. Cool, there's a zero. That's the same thing. Um, and it led to the kind of uh, the triple equals situation, which I don't know if everybody knows about, but it's, it's amazing. Um, and PHP is just kind of this, uh, yeah, sticky, sticky tape. Um, but at the same time, I, I'm humbled by it. You know, I grew up on PHP. That's that's where I cut my teeth, um, and it's paid a lot of my rent. So I, I kind of I do have a bit of respect for it, and and it's not going away anytime soon, um, no matter how hard you could wish uh, on that. Um, and I mean, here's here's a simple hello world. So we install it, um, it and uh, check up PHP info into a file open our browser to localhost and without pretty without much configuration this this is up and going you've got your first website running granted it's the PHP info file but that's that's good enough for me um, installing on other platforms it's there's MAMP and WAMP and CRAMP and BLAMP and whatever um, sorry <laughs> yeah uh, sorry <laughs> where 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 yeah okay yeah fair enough fair enough but I mean that'll work. It'll work, and PHP is kind of like, ah, oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so okay, so we want to start blogging, and we wget and vomit some PHP onto a server somewhere, and and we're good. We we now have WordPress, and and WordPress is very kind of like, oh, you need MySQL, and you know, WAMP and MAMP and CRAMP all have MySQL built in, and you literally just throw some some code down, and then go through a wizard, and and you've got your first blog. Um, and the point is that it also works on the same kind of principle um, as, as that initial one, is that it just opens a PHP file and then there's some voodoo that kind of roots everything through that same PHP file, but it, there's, there's nothing complicated to it. It's all very simple. You want to start getting fancy, there's, there's Drupal, Symfony, Code Igniter, whatever, um, and there's actually 
some quite interesting things happening in the, the PHP packaging side of things. Unfortunately, because it's a language that hasn't kind of grown up with uh, Python's kind of, okay, cool, we, we're doing packaging and we're doing it right from day one. There's, there's like a few different competing standards and, and some people are getting on board and I don't know, maybe in three years time they'll, there'll be a, a, a really sensible solid, that's what you do for package management. But for most of PHP people, they just chuck all their, their modules, their dependencies all into one uh, repo and, and you're good to go. Um, but yeah, there, there's kind of a maturing to that. And, and I think it's because of the, the competition from Ruby and, and Python and whatever else that's, that's kind of come around. Okay, so let's get it on the internet. Um, there's a plethora of options. Like, I can host it on my own machine. I can go and for $5 a month, I can buy a, a hosting server <coughs> somewhere. And it's all very much sim similar. You FTP on, you, you unzip your shit, and you're good to go. Your web server's up and running, and it's all clickety clickety. I don't, like, you don't have to have much skill to getting this stuff up and running. I said plethora. I mean, there's a shitload. Like, you go and you, you can, I mean, how many businesses r run around hosting PHP? It's really simple. It's very simple for them to set it up as well. Um, you know, right, right now in an afternoon, I could probably set up a PHP hosting service for people. It's the billing and all that that's complicated. When it comes to setting up Python hosting services, there's a couple around, and we'll get to them. But um, it's complicated. Like, th there is a, a complexity to it that's, that's not quite as simple as just dropping a file onto a web server and you're good to go. Um, so, is this really easier in Python? Um, I've got to be honest, I don't think so. Um, I, you know, once we've drunk the Kool-Aid and, and we've found out how wonderful it is and, and seen all the, the lovely aspects, uh, I mean, as we saw there, like, there's so much cool stuff. I love it. It is an amazing language. But, like, getting up and going is... It's not easy. So that guy comes around again. He's like, PHP is terrible. How terrible? I don't know if anybody's read. Has anybody seen this article? PHP, a fractal of bad design. Okay. How, how passionate is this guy? 9,000 words about how terrible PHP is. Okay. So it's an acknowledged fact. It's terrible. There are things in there that are just so horrible. It, it makes you want to scrape your eyes out. Um, but at the same time, it's very simple to get up and going. There's a million blog posts out there that say, here we go, here's how you get up and running on PHP, and just do this and vomit some shit in there, and, and you're good. You've got your first website going. Um, okay, so, so that guy comes around. He's like, just install Python and get going. So, okay, cool. I go to python.org and, and say, okay, I'm, I want to download and install Python. Um, I don't know if anyone else finds this page confusing, and you know, I, I've been around, I've, I, I've been in the Python world, so I'm, I'm like, okay, cool, PyPy and Jython and Iron Python, but we start off saying, hey, there's all these alternative ones, and I'm like, I want fucking Python, I don't know about alternatives. So, you know, there's, there's already that kind of, hey, I want to get going, and, and now you're presented with this page, and you suddenly have to make a choice, and you haven't even written a line of Python yet, and it's like, well, what kind of Python do you want? Um, okay, so, you know, that's just a, a small fact. But, so yeah, so we're like, what? And, um, you know, yeah, it's actually not as bad as that. On, on OS X, on Linux, it's, it's out of the box. <laughs> Windows, really? Come on. Are, are there any Windows developers in here? Sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> So yeah, you can install, I mean, Windows is probably a bit easy, you can install it, and then I don't know how you do anything um, <laughs> after that. Okay, so that guy comes around, he's like, just learn Python, buddy, it's easy. Okay, so we go to python.org again, and I mean, you know, no offense to python.org, but how do I learn? Like, this, this is about Python the language. Um, and there's some great stuff there. There's like, well, there's Python 2, and you can find out all, all about this stuff. And, you know, maybe if I dive into documentation, I guess I could, like, read from scratch about the language. But it's not, that's not how you learn. You don't sit and read documentation from page one. You're like, oh, that module, cool, okay. Um, that's, that's not how you learn. So it, it's kind of, it is a bit of a usability thing there, just saying, like, here's some resources to learn more about Python. Um, 
Uh, but again, there's actually, you know, and we, we live in a good time. There's Learn Python the Hard Way is a resource that I've given to a lot of people, and they kind of, it's, it's quite a nice uh, interactive approach to just learning about Python. Um, Code Academy's got some great, great videos. Udacity's got, okay, it's ComSci 101, but it's taught in the context of Python. So th there's some cool resources. I mean, there's also Dive into Python, but I, I haven't looked at it recently, but I would, yep. Yeah. yeah. I may be missing an A. It's so great having, <laughs> having critical people around. <laughs> yeah, it may, it may be missing an A. Just, I mean, you can Google Code Academy. Is it right? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I thought I copy-pasted it, but, I mean, that's how I do my job, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's cool resources. I think Dive into Python might be a bit long in the tooth now, but I, I'm not sure if it's, if it's been kept up to date. I just know Learn Python the hard way is quite cool, and, and uh, it's, it's a nice uh, handheld approach to things. Okay, but, like, I really wanted to just make a website. Like, that's, that's why I'm here, right? So, okay go learn how to use Python in the web. Um, it's quite a long page, but you're like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suck it up and, and start, start reading. Um, the example they have on the page talks about CGI lib. Now, that's great, but uh, how many people are using CGI now for production stuff? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> the point is, this is no... Um, put PHP info in a file. This this is like CGI and there's some fucked up weird shit here and you, you have to set the content type. So okay. <sighs> Fine. Um like what? Just just learn Django and by now everybody's fallen asleep because this guy is just like he's talking a lot. So okay, l l let's go ahead and learn Django. It's actually quite a welcoming page, and I mean that—that's what actually brought me to Python is, is Django, and and um, it's a very nice framework because it kind of takes you from the beginning, holds your hand, and and it uh, you know you can literally dive in by reading the overview, and it gives you a nice overview, and then jumps you into a tutorial, and and you can start learning from there. So everybody that I've worked with that I've continued to harangue until they actually started to learn Python has has come through Django, and whether you like it or loathe it or you think it's ORM as crap or whatever, it's, it's a very nice handheld approach. It's just like, guys, come in and you want to learn web programming and by the way, you're going to learn Python while you do that. Um, so, okay, cool. Um, okay, I've, I've run through the tutorial and, and I'm, I'm interested, but I'm, I'm still a bit hazy on some of the things. Um, so, okay, let's... Let's kind of dive in, poke around a little bit. Um, okay, I'm, like that settings file is quite complicated. I, I don't know if anyone is, you know, as if with fresh eyes, go and install Django, um, create a default project, and open up the settings file, and uh, it's quite complicated, actually. There, there's like, well, there's static files and media files, and, and there's middleware, and, and you need to set your locale, and blah, blah, and, you know, find a, as a seasoned person, I've been using it since like 0.96 or something stupid. And I'm like, there's a lot of good reason that that stuff is there. But sitting down with somebody next to me and saying, well, here's Django. And you, oh, you've got to, yeah, you've got to do the media files. Let me explain that. And, and it gets quite complicated very quickly. So, OK. And, and there's a crap load of files to Django. That's almost 1,000. That's very close to 1,000. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, sorry, it's, it's almost about now. So it's a lot. Um, it's a lot to take in, actually. Like when when you start landing in, in it and you start wanting to learn or whatever, it's quite a lot to take in. So this guy is like, just use Flask or Bottle or Pyramid. Like pff, you can you can start from the ground and, and work your way up. So the neckbeard guy, he's like, <laughs> <sighs> like no offense, we're going back to Django, cause like there's. For me, uh, you know, a lot of my job works uh, ends up being around usability and, and stuff, and, and I look at this through the lens of that, and those frameworks are great, and once you've matured, and once you are on Django uh, Python world, and you've used Django for a while, you start understanding what WSGI is, and you start understanding what middleware, and blah, 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 and what the ORM actually is, um, but 
it's not something that holds your hand because you install it and then it's like, okay, cool, you can make a website, and that, that's easy. And then you're like, okay, I want an ORM. It's like, well, you can use SQL Alchemy, or one of these wrappers on top of it. What's a wrapper? And then you want to do templating. Oh, well, there's so many templatings you can choose from. You can use Ginger or I don't know, whatever. There's a million of them. Point is, it's not, it doesn't hold your hand. It's like the, the world is your oyster and, and you can just do what you want. Um, okay, so we go back to a ghetto hello world. Um, and it's, it's relatively straightforward. Um, the best editor in the world, right there. There we go. Um, <laughs> sorry, Emacs, guys. Um, okay, so it's pretty straightforward. We, we kind of, we, we set up a pattern and whatever, and we run a server, and then we, we open. Uh, does everybody know about XDG open? So on Linux, this, this is, it, it actually mimics what OSX but this will um, look in your file type database, um, like with GNOME or whatever, and it'll actually open up. So it'll do the action. So if I said XDG open a file, it will open up OpenOffice if it needs to open up open, open Office, whatever. Um, I quite like it. It's from the Mac world that you can just say, like, open this directory, and it opens up Finder, open a file, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so this is all cool and everything, and, and we're nice and ghetto. Um, but it's still a bit complicated. I mean, like, for somebody c to consume that's come from the PHP world where you like, it's oriented towards a file and that gets processed and whatever, we're now having to set up some URL patterns and, you know, if you're coming from Flask or Bottle, fine, you would have decorated maybe and, and put the pattern, but there's still this conceptual kind of thing that that you're not quite just running this thing from top to bottom, it's it's doing a bit of magic and then producing a web page. Um, okay, so, cool, we've got our, our website up and running. Let we want to tell everybody about it and show it. Um, okay, so let's look at deployment. Now, there's like, you can learn about whiskey servers and fussy jar and mud python. Uh, that's deprecated, but we've still got it here, just in case. There's authentication, static files, okay. Tracking code, so, you know, no offense, but like, somebody who's doing their first deployment, getting it out there for the world, this, this stuff's a little bit complicated. Um, Huh? So, you know, you just got to demonize your mod whiskey process in Apache. Or you should probably use G or Nacon or micro whiskey. <laughs> you, you're crazy if you're using mod Python, bro, because that shit is old. And, you know, don't forget your static files that you've also got to serve. From PHP world, I'm just like, I put some shit in there, and then Apache's all like, here's your files that you ordered, in, and I made a pretty website for you. So, it's just, there's a lot of concepts to start grappling with. I mean, it's no rake, a passenger, and fusion, the Apache gem, right? Am I right? Hey? Okay, so, does anyone get that joke? Just checking. Um, yeah, okay, and by the way, guy, you should really do all this under virtual env. And by now, your friend is like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> virtual env? So yeah, okay, fine, training wheels, you can just install it globally and then you're going to have the one day the pleasure of trying to do something and that thing you installed three years ago fucks up your dependencies and shit. But anyway, does anyone know about 12-factor app? Okay, everyone in this room, if you're, if you're dealing with development on websites and web scale, go to that website and read everything that they have to say. It's probably going to confirm a lot of the things that you already know, but it's a really good handbook to saying, here are the best practices for dealing with these kind of things. It's everything from um, how you deal with version control, repeatable deployments, etc., etc. It's It's great. So yeah, so now a guy's like, 12, what? Um, okay, so we can just, you know, you can deploy to Heroku and Gondor and OpenShift and whatever else. Um, and oh, also, y you're going to need to use Git or Mercurial or something or other. Um, and I'm all, I'm cool with that. But I did send somebody, and there's a great page on Heroku to say, here's how you get your first Django app up and running on, on Heroku. And Heroku is amazing. I love it. So it's still complicated. You, you read that thing from top to bottom, and, and there's a lot of like, oh, this is just Django. But to somebody who's new, they're like, 
where does Django end and where does Python begin and, and where does Heroku begin and end? And, and it's a little bit complicated. So there's a bit of kind of sensitivity around this stuff. So nobody said this is going to be easy to learn Python. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess that's my talk. Um, I'd like to, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, we could bash PHP until it's blue in the face, but Python also has some what. I mean, uh, the request library is basically the r the fact that URL lib one two HTTP lib CGI. I don't know if anyone's had to do something where all those things ended up in one page, and you're like, okay, I need to parse the URL now, and then I need to do this, and and you're using like eight libraries. And it's all HTTP, but anyway, so there's, there's these warts, and they still exist in Python 3. Some of them have been smoothed over, but, but they're complicated. It's, it's not quite, quite clear. Cool. So that's me. I take questions. Yeah. Um, I think part of the problem might be that the Python community has a general sense of doing things the correct way, sure. and that always involves much more overhead. And it takes, like, you can still have a nice simple interface for it, but it takes a while and practice to figure out what the use case is. For sure. instance, request is an amazing library, uh, and it does proper HTTP, uh, but it took a really long time to understand what the use cases are. Sure. Um, w I work, we have to do with um, Unity, the, the engine thing, and it has, um, has a, it has an HTTP library as well, which is very simple to use, and everybody like, oh, this is, I just have to pass the URL and it gives me stuff. Sure. Um, but we can't use it because the simplicity breaks everything we have and assumptions on the server side, so you can only set get into post requests. Sure. And you can only send URL encoded post requests, for instance. Um, so it's, it, 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 it takes time to figure out how something works. Um, and also Python is not a language that's just for web development. It does sure. other things as well. So. I think we're getting better there. It, it's just a very slow process. No, sure, I, and that's why I say. I mean, I, I like Django, and it's kind of, it's it's quite handholdy and and kind of okay. You do this, and then this, and then you have your first uh, sample application up and running. Um, but there there is a degree of intimidation, and and I th and for me as well, uh, trying to get people onto this language, um, you know that that kind of, hey, you should learn Python. Um, it it kind of doesn't doesn't come with a reason and uh, you know and, and that's why I like saying okay go learn Django because that's got a reason you're going to build a website at the end of it and, and that's your, your goal and along the way you're gonna learn Python and then from that you can start getting exposure to these other things but you know with, with us all being so clever and everything you know the requests library and, and all this stuff it it starts being that you know it's, it's the vanity of these small differences that suddenly means that we've got four different libraries that do, do the same thing the the thing of a million different standards um, and you've just got to be a bit sensitive to that when when bringing somebody into this world and, and it's just for me is finding those critical paths to say here we go here's something you, it'll hold your hand through it and and just get used to it and and, and start learning it and start learning the processes because I feel like Python is kind of this the steep hump to get going and and it's not long it's like a day or two of just concerted effort and then you you're into the world and you can start understanding it and but after that it's it's easy to learn once you start understanding that but yeah one thing I, w I would like to add to this is um, for Flask became quite popular as a framework um, and I learned a lot of how to improve documentation to guide like absolute newcomers through the whole thing yeah and the documentation points out how to install virtual env and I have not seen anyone showing up on the RC channel or the mailing list yeah. not using virtual env yeah, and yeah. it didn't even come up as a problem because yeah. the documentation walks you through this process so I think we can still have complex tools for as long as it's well yeah. documented and obviously the Python documentation itself and the website are not newcomer friendly but yeah, I think we, yeah. we don't have to throw everything away in order to uh, to, no, to sure. simplify the development experience for people. I, I mean, on, on the virtual end front, like with Python 3.3, .3, virtual end is just part of Python now. Um, and, and it's those small differences that, you, you know, like 
if you start saying, oh, you must use virtual env, somebody's got to now install Python, and then they've got to install virtual env, and then you start saying, well, do you pip install it, do you install it natively, all that, those sort of questions that, that start getting complicated, and Python 3.3 is starting to solve some of that, and yeah. Uh, yeah, sort of coming from the PHP world, um, what you sort of find is for most of the common use cases in the web that they've sort of got short times for doing that. Yeah. For instance, if you think about something like simple XML load from string file get contents like RSS feed somewhere in the web, it's yeah. one line, you've got all RSS feed loaded to the object. Now, this might work or not work based on like 100 different PHP settings. <laughs> I think this is my question is, is there any sort of attempt on the Python world to try and take these common sort of use cases oh, on absolutely. the web and then make them just as simple as they are in PHP? Um, the requests library is like a, a very simple tool that you can use to say, um, I need to talk to an API over the web. It is dead simple. If you're talking JSON to the far side, you get a native Python dictionary out of that. Um, so there's very there's very simple tools like re requests is one of them. Um, on the XML stuff, I mean there's there's a lot of RSS stuff around that that makes it very simple. Um, uh, mechanize, which comes from Poll World, is like if you have to do screen scraping and interacting with with a page as if you're a browser, like that's done. That's that's easy. Um, so there are actually a lot of these cases that are solved. And the lovely thing about Python is once you start understanding what uh, 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 requirements files. You can literally just say like, Burr, here install these things and then use them as a library. And then and Django and Flask world, and probably Bottle. I don't know. Um, there's also just the concept of reusable applications. So I mean, if, if I want to set up a poll that uh, has ratings on objects, I can just install. There's probably four Django options for me to just install and done. I don't have to write a single line of code, I just have to do templates and, and I'm done. Um, as opposed to PHP where you're like, I need to do a poll, I'm now going to write a form handler class. Like, what the hell? So so there are a lot of these cases that are solved. And and as a, and uh, I mean, I keep saying Django until I, I explode, um, and everybody else does. But that's that has a lot of those kind of here we hold your hand like this stuff is solved in in this we've we've got localizations we've got form handling we've got ORM and you know the ORM is not perfect but it, it's good enough for like get up and going and, and start using it but you you don't have to worry about if you're talking to MySQL or Postgres or SQLite or whatever <laughs> it's it's just there it just works um, so the I, I think that there are a lot of these where it's just there's this clear like cool boom 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 I mean, my development speed has improved so incredibly since starting to use Django just because I can say, well, there's this whole ecosystem of things and I can just install them and, and problems disappear. I, I need a, a commentary box, cool, done. I need ratings and stuff, cool, done. Like, I don't have to write code anymore. Cool. Any other questions? Questions, yes. More of a comment, really, but I, half of the fun for me, uh, call me a masochist, half of the fun for me was was figuring out how all this stuff fits together. Sure. Um, and uh, But once things with Python come into focus, they're not a mirage, mm. <laughs> and they stay in focus. Yeah. Um, things don't wander off on, um, you know, they, they, they get better and better and better. Not, uh, worse yeah, and as worse you dive down the rabbit hole, it doesn't get scarier. Yeah, it's like, it okay, cool, I'm, I'm comfortable with this stuff. Yeah. I mean, as, as kind of a background to where I came to Django, is I'd started, uh, it was when Ruby on Rails was kind of the big, the big new thing. Um, and I spent about a month working on a project that, that had nice deadlines and whatever, nice wide deadlines. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try Ruby on Rails. And I spent a month hacking away. And, and part of it was kind of learning the the ORM and and the um, MVC kind of model again, um, and then I was just butting my head up against shit, and and like there was there was things that I wanted to do that just fell out of what it want what it needed what they felt was the normal thing there, um, and suddenly I was like bump 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 up against the shit, and I spent one weekend and learned Django Python and caught up to where my project had been a month, and I mean maybe maybe I'm just clever. 
but I was just like by Monday morning I was like I can now continue this project on Python and Django and that for me was such an amazing thing to have had this rail stuff and have great progress and then bump 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 for, for weeks and then be like okay open up a new chapter and now never look back and I, I haven't I mean no offense to Ruby on Rails but it's it's horrible from my experience because of that that like obscured stuff that magic that goes on behind it and I mean I don't know if anyone's used Django since before they removed the magic and that the kind of the cleanness that kind of came out of that whole experience and and now it's just it's a, it's a very sensible framework to, to my mind and, and you you read through the source code and you're like okay cool this is understandable it's not rocket science it's not crazy it's just reasonable stuff cool one more question if anybody has one no pressure no pressure <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Brad for his talk but also for making me uh, learn Django um, <laughs> So, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>